first step is to turn on your wireless hotspot. This is going to take about a minute or two to boot up. And then secure it to the fence. So, uh, then once it's booted up, we're going to check the, the, the speed. Okay, I'm going to talk about stream quality and bitrate. So depending on what resolution you want to stream at, you have to have the appropriate upload speed or bitrate to upload that video so that it's, it's uploaded with quality and looks good for your viewers. So Sideline HD has published some numbers on recommended bit rates. If you want to stream at 720p, which is 1280 by 720 resolution, the minimum recommended bit rate is 1.9 megabits per second. If you want to stream at 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 resolution, the minimum bit rate is four megabits per second. And they do have a note to stay below six megabits per second. I don't know why that is. But if you run a speed test on like Google or Ookla, you can see your upload speed, but that's not always accurate. You know, for example, I'm at my house now using the T-Mobile 5G hotspot and I recorded 51 meg down and four meg, or excuse me, 41 meg down and 1.4 meg up, which is quite terrible for 5G. 5G has uh, way more potential than that. Um, so what I like to do here um, is check the bit rate before I go live with the stream. So I set up a um, kind of a test stream to my personal YouTube channel to look at the bit rate. And then from there, I decide what resolution I'm going to stream at for the Sideline HD stream. I don't want to do the tests on Sideline HD because whom, all the parents that are signed up um, for that particular stream will get notifications when the stream goes up. So I want to avoid that and start off um, with the right resolution. And if I start a stream at one resolution and then have bad connection and have to stop, then you know then people will have to reconnect. So I'd like to try and get it correct on the first try. We will. I'm going to create a spreadsheet um, based on location and device and service and date and time um, for the bit rate and upload speed. I think that will be handy if we know which field, which location. Um, you know, does T-Mobile or AT&T work better at? Because it, it, it is dependent um, on the cell coverage on what uh, what upload speed you'll get. So I'll, this is an example of how to do that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go live here, hit the red dot. I'm, this is from Amiibo. Um I'm going to set my starting resolution at 1080. I'm going to click on RTMP and I'm going to go straight to my personal YouTube channel. All right, it will start. Let it connect here. And then to see the bit rate, you click on this bar in the lower left. You don't have to actually click on the on anything besides the bar, but it'll expand. And you see I'm getting 3.2 seven meg bit rate, bit rate, which is pretty good. Um, over the last hour that I've been testing this or so, I've seen it go as high as five and as low as one. Um, so it, it all depends, I guess. It, it does depend on the, the coverage um, and the time because I haven't moved the hotspot anywhere. Um, during this testing. So you can see it's starting to drop. So at this point, um, I'm at 2.6. Uh, I would probably move uh, with this. I'll, I'll give it a few minutes to see on where it settles out at, what the average is. But, um, you know, since I'm not 
at four consistently or above, I'm probably going to use 720p. I want, I want to stream at 1080, the highest resolution possible, but I also want a stable connection and quality video. I don't want to try to stream at 1080p and then have poor video for the users. But uh, so that is how you see the, the, the bit rate on a Mevo camera. So the next step is putting the fence clip that we'll mount the camera to on the fence. Um, the fence clip has a little spring in here. You want to stick in a section of the fence in the bottom and then squeeze here with your finger to attach to another one. Uh, I like to put, uh, position this fence clip center of home plate, but up high. So you probably want it at least six to six and a half feet off the ground. So I'm gonna put in one section. I'm gonna push like this until it flips in like that. And you see how it got the other section of the fence. And then I'm gonna tighten it down. This, this will tighten this so it can't come undone. The other important thing to do is also lock this. So in case something happens, um, you have a secondary lock to the fence in case it, it drops. So this is now attaching the, the camera here. Um, so I have a, a positioning arm here. You just loosen this and it, it can move in all, all the joints. There's like one, two, three, three joints here. So um, what I tend to do is just get it into position and kind of lock it for there. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach my camera to it. Okay, so before you put it on, you wanna power on your camera. You just hold down the power button. It's not focusing. And then you'll hear, when you let go of it, you'll hear a, a beep beep. Make sure you have an SD card in there because it will automatically record the SD card also. All right, so now I'm gonna screw my camera on here. Like that. All right, so this is where you'll have to adjust a little bit. Okay, you obviously want the camera facing forward. Well, what we can do now is we could we could put the mic on here. So the mic. You have two options. You don't necessarily need a mic, but I'm gonna attach a, um, what's called a shotgun mic. And a shotgun mic, uh, the benefit of that is that it will only collect, uh, gather the sound that's forward and won't get the, the sound that's uh, uh, behind it. So parents talking, for example. Um, so this mic, it's a Rode mic and it has a, um, has a, this is like a vibration stabilizer. So this, this will slide in here like that and you just screw it to tighten it in okay the other thing the other part the other important thing about your mic is this is a, a wind a wind shade so it blocks out um, all the wind so that will just slip on over the top of the mic like that and it really doesn't make a difference if that, that is touching the fence or not okay and then the final thing is to connect the cable from the, the back of the mic into the back of the camera. Okay, just like that. So now the, the next step will be, we need to center the camera in a way that it, it doesn't touch any of the fence, right? Um, and it, it, it covers enough of the, the field, right? We wanna cover first to third base. So we have to position this and we also have to get this level. We don't want a, we don't want a field that's at an angle, right? So to, the way you do that um, is you have to open up the, the Mevo app and you can look at the, the video coming from the Mevo while you're adjusting it. So I'm gonna pause the video now and switch to the Mevo and do a video recording. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is connect the Mevo um, to the camera and actually connect the Mevo to the hotspot and then align it so that it's it's in view. So first thing you want to do is go to configure Mevo and you want to make sure that it's connected to the hotspot which it is automatically connected this particular one did so it's already connected then you want to click on the connect the connect button okay so now you can see that the uh, the Mevo is um, 
is set up, but it's being blocked by the uh, the fence. So we need to we need to adjust it a little bit. In fact, it's getting a little bit of the the mic in there. So we move that around. If you can hold that for me. So you have to hold that down. And I need to look at that screen. So I'm going to loosen. I'm going to loosen up the joint on the positioning line, and I'm going to move this so that it's not being blocked by the fence. And that it's level. So it's a kind of a tricky, this is the trickiest part of this, is getting this level so that, and also that it's not being blocked by the fence. Sometimes, depending on the fence, um, you may not be able to. Can you see? So that looks pretty good. So I'm going to try and lock it in the position right there. And it does look pretty level. Now remember, this is attached to a fence, so that if it get hits, gets hit by a ball, it's going to shake, and it may things may move a little bit, right? So you may have to come back and, and readjust it. But that looks pretty pretty good right now. So in order to start the stream, um, and I'll take a picture of how I have this position right now, just so you can see what this picture looks like. In order to start the stream, you want to hit the red. Uh, record button All right now you have to pick where you're going to stream it to so we're going to we're going to stream to rtmp that's the streaming protocol and then i will have one that's already set up here um, i'll just show you the the details here it'll be different for every different um it'll be different for each different streaming location and each different streaming account uh, one thing you should do is that you should you need to pick your stream resolution. So I have it set to 720 right now. I'm going to move it up to 1080 and see how it does. These are my particular um, settings for my account that I'm streaming to. It'll be different for yours, uh, and I need to block these out. Um, but you can load this in ahead of time before you get to the field. And so then once you're ready to go live, you simply go, you hit go live. One other thing I forgot to mention, and you can do this um, while the stream is going, is that you see I just got a notification that my stream is live. Uh, and I'll get a YouTube link here in a second that I'll open up. But um, you need to adjust the video um, settings, like the color and such. For, and such. So there's a couple different things here. So if you're outdoors, um, and you can see how this changes. You can select one of these. And by the way, if you click on that, it is now zoomed in a, in a certain section of the field. So you got to get get to open it up so that the red is around the entire view. But I just changed that to outdoors. I can change it to high contrast. You can see it changes the view, um, you know, this, the color properties a little bit. So you just have to play on with that. It, it depends on the day and what. Um, what the, the lighting conditions look like. So right now I'm just going to leave it at, at, at out, as outdoors. You also can come in and change and change manually change the exposure settings, um, you know, the color, the brightness, the contrast and so forth manually. Or you can just choose one of their default settings. Like I'm going to choose outdoors. Okay. And so now it is streaming. Um, and once you're here, you can simply hit that, hit X, um, and it's streaming. Um, in order to get the, the scoreboard added on, you'll have to start up either Sideline HD or your iScore app. And then once it starts, uh, once Sideline HD starts receiving that information, then it will, um, it will overlay it. One step I did forget here was that to start the, um, you have to start the, the pocket radar. So that's a second app that you'll have to start and I'll, I'll do a video on that on how to start that. Uh, but let's just switch for now, let's just switch to YouTube and see the stream. So I'm gonna go to my text uh, and I'm gonna open up the YouTube stream. And it'll be about 30 seconds delayed. There it is. 
So we are getting a little bit of feed. We just don't have the scoreboard here yet. Um, so that's the live feed. So the next thing I'm gonna do is install the pocket radar. Um, and there's a clip here that one side will clip on the pocket radar and the other one will clip on the fence. So to attach this pocket, pocket radar, you just put it down at the bottom. You don't want you don't want the clip to be up here. This is where the radar is at. So just attach it like that. You're gonna turn it. Um, you're gonna have to turn it at a certain angle, but you want the radar facing the field. So it really doesn't matter where you. I mean, I put it close to the to the to the camera, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, it just you just need to be pretty much in line with the picture. Um, you don't want to be too great of an angle. A little bit of an angle is okay. Uh, but again, you want this. You want this positioned. Um, so that it's, I guess the fence really doesn't make a difference that I've seen. Um, it'd be nice if you could position it in, in a location that, where it didn't get blocked by a fence, but I don't think that really matters. So I'm going to adjust this a little bit like that. So that one's pretty good. And again, lock it to the fence just in case something happens, this falls out, gets hit by a ball or something. It's, this is locked to the fence. You'll see what I've added here is a battery for the pocket radar. Now the pocket radar will, will run in continuous mode so if you use regular batteries um, it may not last two hours so i have rechargeable batteries in here and then i have a battery pack that's plugged up here that will provide power for forever basically well for it'll provide power for many many hours and you don't need batteries in here if you're going to run this but i just have my my um rechargeable batteries up there Okay, so I've connected the, blue, the pocket radar to battery here, and what I need to do is now connect it to my phone. So I've, to do that, you, you hold down the, the two power button, the mode recall button and this gray button, and it'll start to flash Bluetooth 601. So the next step is I'll go to my pocket radar app and connect it, and then, um, and then I'll come back and change it to continuous mode. Okay, so now I'm gonna connect the pocket radar. So I've opened up the app. I'm gonna hold down the mode, recall, and gray button on the pocket radar. It's gonna flash Bluetooth 601. I'm gonna hit connect on my, um, on my pocket radar app. It's gonna tell me what to do here. I've already done that. Hit continue, select connect. Okay. So now the radar is connected. You want to make sure that you're on baseball and pitching, right? Make sure that that's selected. And then you're gonna hit start. So it's gonna put the, this will put the pocket radar into continuous mode. Now you need to keep your, you need to keep your phone or your iPad, whatever's recording this information, because this information is going from the pocket radar to your phone or your iPad to sideline, to, to the pocket radar server, to sideline HD. So you have to keep that phone or IP, iPad close to the pocket radar. I was about 20 feet away last week and uh, I was losing connection. So I had to step closer with my phone. So it's best to have your phone um, on the fence right next to the pocket radar, or you need to be within 10 feet um, and shouldn't behind, be behind walls. So here's, here's the pocket radar in continuous mode. It's reading continuously and feeding information to your phone, okay? Uh, one of these is great to uh, mount your phone to the fence. It expands, there's a little spring in there. So put your phone in this and then clip it to the fence and then you have it all right near all of your equipment. So this would be sitting here and this would be talking to the pocket radar. Just like that. 